Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. And today I wanna to show you a few PC build templates, which I think are really solid at the moment. Basically taking uh, you know some of the best parts that are out there right now and putting them together in a pretty good price point and you guys can use them as a bit of a guide. Now, it's not the best time to be building a PC. I think everyone knows that. But rather than just not put out any recommendations, not put out any kind of guides or kind of help out there, I at least wanna have this video out there to have as a bit of a recommendation, a bit of direction for those people who might not know anything, uh, you know, and not know where to start at all. And, you know, this is definitely one of those videos that I kind of deliberated on for a while, you know, should I even make it? But I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put it out there. Some people could use the extra help and the extra guidance. 2021, you know, it's not been the best year for PC hardware. We all know that uh, for people who have been trying to build a PC. On one hand, you have, you know, GPUs like the 3080, 3080 Ti and whatnot, which are really expensive, really hard to get. And then on the other hand, you know, you just don't have many parts coming out this year that are actually good. Overall, let's just try not to be too negative and too depressed about it because you can actually put together a pretty good PC these days with the right parts and the right budget. And the first question, of course, that some of you might be asking is, hey, you know, are there new parts around the corner? Should I even build a PC right now? Should I upgrade? And I think if you're asking those sort of questions, you should just honestly not even build a PC, not even, you know, look for an upgrade because, you know, if you don't need to upgrade, if you're not like kind of desperate and you really need to put something together, then honestly, probably just wait, probably just keep saving the pennies together. And then when the time is right, then you have a really good upgrade waiting for you. This video is mainly for those who have been kind of waiting and waiting and waiting to put something together and are just really ready to pull the trigger on something. Now, having said that, around the corner, we do have CES 2022 in January, which is, you know, only about a month and a half away. So PC parts probably could be announced then, but I really doubt we're going to see any, you know, significant announcements when it comes to the GPU. I would say it's a pretty good bet not waiting around for that if you're looking for a good deal on a GPU. Usually at CES, we might see stuff like new PC cases, uh, new CPU announcements, maybe some new motherboards. That's pretty much all I would really bet on. Very soon though, NVIDIA will be refreshing the RTX 2060. Now they've already listed the upcoming specs, which features a 13% bump in CUDA core count and 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So projected performance will likely be brought up to something like an RTX 2060 Super, which sits slightly below the RTX 3060. But for this to be worth it, it really needs to come in at a solid price, which I do have my doubts. There are also rumors of an RTX 3050 and an RX 6500 XT, but again, who knows whether those GPUs will actually come in at a decent price. So other than those upcoming parts and the you know horrendous GPU prices at the moment, of course, I would say that now is an okay time to be building a PC if you really need to, and if your budget is like $1,200 plus US. So I actually want to start off with this PC build right here because I think this is one of the best PCs that you can put together at the moment. Firstly, because I have actually put it together and I will link that video down below. But second of all, the amount of performance that you're getting uh, for what you're paying is actually not that bad at all. So the RTX 3060 Ti here, you know, this has a $400 US MSRP. If you can find it at Best Buy, that would be 100% ideal. But you know, at Micro Center, Newegg, I've had a look at the prices. You can expect to probably pay close to this $600 US mark. And I will say that, you know, $1,400 US all up, this is by no means a cheap PC build, but I would say that this PC build is probably like, you know, the most worth it to build, if that makes sense. Once you start going above the 3060 Ti, prices for GPUs really start to skyrocket. And once you go below that, apart from a 6600 XT, which you might be able to get for like $500 ideally, you know, GPUs just become too weak to become worth it. So think of like the RX 6600, for example, or the RTX 3060, those GPUs should just be way, way cheaper than they are for the amount of performance that they're actually delivering. And I would absolutely love to sit here and show you guys some killer PC builds for like $600, $700, but those PC builds just aren't a reality these days and they probably won't be for a while. If that is your budget, I would highly consider just continuing to save or just looking on the used market instead. Now you can get this down to around $1,250 US or so if you sub out the RTX 3060 Ti for the 6600 XT 
SSD and also downgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes versus the 32 gigabytes that we had in there initially. However, I would only do this if you can find the 6600 XT for like $500 or less. Any more than that, and you really need to consider how close you're creeping up to the 3060 Ti because that is a much better GPU. But breaking this one down a little bit more, for the CPU, we've gone with the i5-11400, which is one of the best value gaming CPUs that you can get at the moment. And we've paired this with the MSI B560i Gaming Edge motherboard and a Hyper 212 Black CPU cooler. This motherboard is ITX, so we're going with a compact build here. This build doesn't really need to be that big. And it also allows you to unlock the power limits, which is great. So that means a noticeable performance boost for the i5, but at the same time, we do need a bit more cooling now, and that's where the Hyper 212 comes in. The case that I've chosen for this template is the Cooler Master NR200, which, you know, price-wise, it does fit in there nicely. And despite being an ITX case, it is still roomy enough for larger components and future upgrades down the road. In terms of cooling performance, this case has always been a top performer, and we can push that a little bit further by mounting two 120mm fans underneath the graphics card. Now, that will only be possible if you're running a two-slot or up to a 2.3-ish slot card. Uh, any more than that, and you will have to use slim fans instead. Otherwise, you know, we're using some pretty uh, staple PC parts here, like DDR4 3600 CL16 memory, that's plenty for gaming. We also have the Crucial P2 1TB M.2 NVMe, you know, that's pretty solid. And then when it comes to the Corsair SF600, we've gone with the 80 plus gold unit, that is gonna take care of our power, no problem at all. One thing I'll say about that unit though, if you do have about you know 60 bucks to spare and you don't wanna spend that on the memory, there I would upgrade to the 80 plus platinum model. That way you get a much more efficient unit, you get our sleeved cables and the fan curve is noticeably quieter on the 80 plus platinum. So that's why we've gone for that model in the $1,400 version of this template. Overall, this is a build that will destroy pretty much anything at 1080p and is definitely capable at 1440p as well. I mean, even at 4K in some games, if you really want to stretch it and use this with your 4K TV or a 4K monitor, this build is doable for that as well for a lot of games. Now, of course, if you prefer a mid tower case, that is totally possible as well. And there you're looking at paying about the same amount. Uh, so basically just swapping out the motherboard, the power supply in the case, and the rest is really up to personal preference. Now, if you do need more gaming performance than this, uh, for example, if you have a 1440p monitor and you really need more frames, uh, then there's no reason that you couldn't just use this entire template and then just in a 3070 or a 3080 if you can get your hands on that instead and if your budget allows. But if you also need a lot more CPU power, maybe you do some video editing or maybe you play a lot more CPU intensive games, this is where I would recommend this template instead. So, you know, considerably more expensive. We're now, you know, north of the $2,100 mark, but I also think the performance also reflects that. So starting with the CPU, the i5-12600K is undoubtedly the best all round CPU that you can buy at the moment. There's just no CPU out there that can do what this can at the $300 price point. For gaming, this is really about as far as I'd recommend going realistically until you also max out the budget for your GPU. And as I've demonstrated previously, this is also a very capable CPU for multi-threaded work as well. Power consumption for the 12600K typically sits at around 120 watts, maybe 130 watts, you know, really pushing it on some motherboards. That's not really a whole lot. You know, you can get away with a single tower cooler like the Hyper 212 that we mentioned earlier in the previous template. That, however, will not fit in the build that we're using here, the case specifically that we're using. Using. So that's where I'd recommend just making it easy and going with a liquid cooler. Now I've gone a little bit overkill here. I'm using a 280ml liquid cooler from EK, which you know I've verified does fit in the case that we're using here. Uh, you know, it's a bit overkill again for a 120 watt power limit, but at the very least, it will leave you with a quieter and cooler system. Now, as for specifically which liquid cooler you go with, whether it's EK or Corsair or NZXT, it doesn't really matter, but there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Firstly, the pump lead need to be completely rotatable on the pump block uh, because you know you might end up with one like the arctic one for example where the pump leads are just completely exiting the block at 90 degrees and that is pretty much a no-go in the case that we're using and you know other compact itx cases so firstly the pump leads definitely need to be completely flexible and then secondly the pump block itself also needs to be relatively compact especially when you're dealing with modern itx motherboards where you know the io shroud is quite big there might
might be some active cooling going on. And then, you know, you have like the VRM heatsink and also the M.2 stackable PCBs that we have going on at the moment. So, you know, ITX motherboards at the moment, they are getting quite, you know, restricted in terms of the keep out zone around the CPU. And that is especially the case with the Z690i uh, Aorus Ultra DDR4 version from Gigabyte. Now, this wouldn't have been my first pick, but all of the other ITX Z690i motherboards seem to be either out of stock or DDR5 only, which is really, really unfortunate. So this looks like our only DDR4 option. So the EK280 AIO will be fine here. And so will, you know, the Kraken X63, for example, that use that rotatable compact pump design. And that brings us to the case that I've selected for this build, which is the Supt Meshlicious. And here, just make sure that you go with the PCIe 4.0 version for full compatibility with your motherboard and GPU, and also the full mesh version as well. I've also bumped the storage up to two terabytes for this specific template here, as well as opted for some faster memory as well. We are sticking with DDR4 memory here though. DDR5 is just way too expensive at the moment for the negligible improvement in performance that you get in return. Otherwise, we have also upgraded the GPU to the RTX 3070, which uh, ideally you could get for like $500 US if you get lucky at Best Buy and cop the Founders Edition model, that would be really good. But realistically, you're looking at paying north of $700. At least that's what today's listings seem to indicate. Overall, this is a really great build if you need some really decent 1440p gaming performance, but also if you're doing some video editing and extra production work on the side too. Those 10 cores on the 12600K, those will really come in handy. But let's say you have a larger budget to work with and you also need a lot more power out of your machine. Here's an idea of what that would look like. So I swapped out the i5 12600K for the i9 12900K and that takes us up to 16 cores in total and those cores will also clock a little bit higher now too. Uh, we've also swapped out the RTX 3070 for the 3080 and that gives us a lot more performance at 1440p, you know, high refresh rate 1440p monitors, this would be a great pair for that. And 4K gaming as well, that's a lot more viable now too. Now, some of you might be wondering why I've specifically gone for the Meshlicious and the Coolmaster NR200 for these two builds. It's because graphics cards are so hard to get your hands on these days, it's more of a case of just kind of grabbing what you can. And, you know, you can still build compact and fit large graphics cards. That's where these two cases really come in clutch is because whether you have a 300 and, you know, 15 mil card or a 300 mil card or a three slot card, these cases can fit most of those cards at no problem at all. I will actually leave a really good spreadsheet link down below for the Meshlicious, which will indicate, you know, which cards don't fit and which ones do and what kind of clearances you can expect for the display port and the side panels. Now, regarding the power supply, you can install larger, higher wattage ATX units in the Meshlicious, but cable management and fitment is a lot better with an SFX unit. With the 750 watt 80 plus platinum unit that we have here, you actually won't have any problems powering this system at all at full load. In fact, I've tested the 600 watt platinum unit and found that to be enough for a 3080 and an overclocked 10900K. So the 750 watt unit here is 100% fine. So this is probably as far as I would recommend taking a high performance gaming PC today. I mean, you can go up to like a 3080 Ti or a 3090, but you were just paying so much more than for negligible performance gains over the 3080. Uh, and when it comes to the RAM, more than 32 gigabytes is not useful at all. And the performance gains going beyond 3600 megahertz CL16, they are quite negligible as well. And of course, this is definitely a build template that you can expand up to a mid tower uh, sized form factor if you prefer that. Uh, I know most of you guys just prefer compact builds instead. So I've kind of given you an idea of what that would look like, but I think it's self-explanatory that fitting this into a mid tower would be no problem at all. Although I would recommend, you know, going with a mid tower that could accommodate at least a 360 mil liquid cooler for the 12900K. That way you don't have any problems when it comes to cooling. I would also, again, recommend sticking with the DDR4 Z690 motherboard. Don't get caught in the trap of, you know, trying to find a DDR5 kit. Really just not worth that huge price increase. So those are a couple of build templates that are worth building at the moment. Again, really would have loved to show you guys some more affordable builds around the $800 or $1,000 mark, but those builds just aren't really possible today. Even when we look at pre-builds around that price, 
last point, the specs are just incredibly atrocious. I mean, either using integrated graphics or a GTX 1650. At that point, if what you're after is primarily a gaming machine, I would actually consider a gaming console. PS5s and the new Xboxes are much easier to get your hands on these days compared to PC hardware and much better value. Obviously, there are compromises there. It's not the full PC experience, but hey, just something to consider. Otherwise, if you are definitely on a stricter budget, then you know, just look at the used market. People are probably getting rid of their PCs towards the end of the year, so maybe there's a bit of luck there. Definitely do your research on kind of what you're getting yourself into though, and what kind of performance you can expect with those components. That, however, is not something that I can really provide guidance or advice on because the parts and the market is always changing. And if you don't want to buy used, I would say, you know, just wait around for the RTX 3050, the AMD RX 6500 XT, and perhaps the, you know, refreshed RTX 2060. Maybe these are GPUs that will come in at a decent price and like okay performance at 1080p, but I really don't want to sit here and give you guys hope because I really don't know if that's going to be the case probably looking at like late January, early February for those parts. Otherwise, I really hope this helped you out. Uh, as always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.